that on your prayer list again. I have no idea what's happening. So we're going to go with what we have. It'll all be entertaining. Um, <laughs>
off all there from time to time. Yes. First. I'll be fine. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're not. I'll be fine. Um, I start my manager store manager training on October twenty fourth. So maybe some prayers that God will help me with my anxiety. Prayers for uh, Holly Jess and her family. Um, the diagnosis on her mother was and is um, stage three lung cancer and stage two COPD. Um, still continuing prayers for their new home. Um, and then also my son, Seraphim's uh, wife, or girlfriend, they're not married, I'm working on um, But they're going to have a baby, I'm going to have a new grandbaby. And then my uncle, uh, Marshall, is going to be having a knee surgery. Just uh, any prayers for the recovery community. We got a couple losses this week. Just kind of never get used to that. Yeah. How's Shirley doing? She okay? She's Sunday mornings and that kind of stuff. Um, Lord, uh, we, uh, we thank you that you have sent us a a counselor, a non-clinical or a clinical counselor that will start the middle of this month. Lord, I'm excited that Jesse's going to be joining us here. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Miles. Lord, we pray for his spirit. Lord, we pray that he's seeking after you. Lord, we just pray that you give his body healing. Um, and give his parents strength as they are trying to manage all the kids and all the things that are going on in their household and still be there every day, every moment for miles. Lord, I, um, Lord, I pray for Abby as, as she's really missing her daughter's senior year of volleyball and, and the struggles that are going on there. Lord, I pray that they, they understand that you're God, you're in control, that you love them, and that um, you can use this to further your, uh, further your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we pray for Rachel, who's still struggling. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray that her pain is managed. Lord, we just pray um, continued blessings upon her. Lord, we lift up the Anderson family. Lord, um, heartache and loss. Um, we do not understand cancer. We don't understand the illnesses. Um, Lord, but we are, we are thankful that Ryan loved you. And he loves you all of his heart and he is with you, Lord. And um, we just pray comfort over that family as they continue to walk through this time of grief. Lord, we praise you that Tasia is healthy. Lord, we praise you that her, um, that she is here today, Lord. She is no longer in the hospital. Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings there. Lord, we lift up April. Lord, as her uh, manager training begins, Lord, we pray that her anxiety is in control and her eyes are on you. Lord, we continue to lift up Holly and her family, Lord, especially for her mom, Lord, as she uh, um, has this diagnosis that isn't fun. Lord, we just pray blessings upon them in healing. Lord, we thank you that Trisha is going to be a grandma again. Lord, we pray for that baby. We pray that um, the baby is healthy. Um, we pray for an easy pregnancy, Lord. Um, we pray that your blessings are there. Lord, we pray for Marshall's knee surgery that goes well and um, heals fast. And Lord, we lift up the recovery uh, community. Lord, um, as Bruce said, losses never are never easy, and uh, you never get used to them, Lord. We just pray that you infiltrate yourself into their lives, Lord, that their addiction becomes you and not the substances that, um, that lead to so much pain. Lord, um, I thank you for the Mary Magdalene house, Lord, and um, Lord, I... Uh, Thank you that we are gathered here together, and Lord, um, I just I just praise your name despite all of my frustrations this morning. Lord, I'm thankful to be here with you. Amen. Amen. Greet somebody.
is Psalms 37, verses 1 through 10. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the new day. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. <clears throat> Today's gospel reading is Luke 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, I'm going to try something, so if something goes bad, I'm sorry.
Stephen, and I pray for the verdict that is yet to come. Lord, I pray for his countenance. Lord, he is a mess. Lord, I pray that he would be able to hold on to you, hold on to you, hold on to you. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Seat groups may be seated. Okay. sentence with the word lost in it, and I'll help you with the first one. I am lost, okay? We understand what the word lost means? Yes. 
All right, now give me another one. Uh, lost, but now I'm found. Lost, but now I'm found. Okay, give me another one. I lost my phone. I lost my phone. I lost my way. What's that? I lost my faith. Is that different than I lost my phone? Faith and phone are different, but is lost different? Okay. I lost my way. I was thinking, and I'm glad you guys said it. <laughs> I am lost, lost, but now I'm found. I lost my phone. How about... They are lost. Okay, we are lost. We are lost. lost the game. Ah, perfect. Okay, so there's lost is a four letter word, but there's some different meanings to lost, some different ways to think about the, the word. And so today I want to talk about Luke 15. So let's go there. So if we're talking about the word lost, if I say I'm lost, or I say, let me tell you stories of a lost youth, or I would say something to the effect of, um, uh, we lost the game, all of it is the same word, but it all has different nuances to the word. Does that make sense? In some cases, lost means something that can't be recovered. All right? I lost my virginity. It's gone. Right? Okay? I lost my phone. That probably can be recovered. Where you get a new phone, can't get a new virginity. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so there are some things that you can lose. I lost my youth. We you can't get youth back. When you go to the gym and you work out and you go on those diets, all you do is get sore. You don't get youth back. Amen. <laughs> right? I mean, so there are some things that can't be lost that cannot be recovered. Uh, we lost the game. Lost the game means that there was an event, there was a contest of some sort that had winners and losers, and I lost. Right? You've ever heard anybody say, I lost at life? Yeah. I've lost at life. What they're really saying there, John, is that they're thinking of life as a, as a competition of some sort in which there's some kind of benchmark of achievement or victory that makes you a winner. And if I don't reach this cultural society standard for winning, that means I'm a loser. Okay. We shouldn't think that way, but, but America is trapped in that understanding of how life works. So is it fair to say that everybody here has experienced lost in some kind of way? I mean, this is something we're familiar with, right? right I play a lot of games. I haven't won them all. You know, so I, I, I've lost, certainly lost games. I'd certainly say there was times in my life where I felt like I was lost. And there were certainly times where I've lost something that I can't recover. So I think we get lost in the different ways of thinking about them. So Luke 15, I want to start verse 3. He told them this parable. Who's he? Jesus. Okay. What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them? does not leave the 99 in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. Question. When he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends, his neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. What is the question that Jesus asked? Who among you would not yeah, the right word? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who doesn't look for the lost sheep? Right? Jesus is saying, wait a minute. Who doesn't look for the lost sheep? What man among you wouldn't look? In other words, he's assuming you would all look. Why? 
Because you're all shepherds. You would all look because you all have sheep. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, most of you in here have heard preaching on Luke 15 multiple times. And we're focusing on different, uh, typically focusing on different things than what we're looking for uh, today. So I want to ask you this question. Why is the sheep lost? Because he's a sheep. Were you here last week? We gave nine reasons why sheep would be lost. Right? <laughs> chief, of, chief of which was what? Sheep don't have any sense of direction. Right. Remember that? This is, John, last week there was nine thing, characteristics of sheep that were also characteristics of human beings. The first one being no sense of direction. The second one will settle for less. Right? We'll drink out this dirty, nasty water rather than walk another 20 feet to drink out this nice, clean water. Chief or sheep are defenseless. Mm -hmm. We have all these different reasons why sheep would be lost, but really, the crux of it is, is because sheep can't help it. Okay? Sheep can't help it. Sheep get lost because that's what sheep do. Now, it's important that we understand that in this description, the sheep is lost through no fault of its own. We have to understand that the sheep is lost through no fault of its own. If a sheep was created in such a way that it does not have a sense of direction, why, can I, why should I be mad at it? Because it doesn't know more than something what? Making sense? I had to do a funeral one time for a guy who had killed himself. A Christian guy. Uh, Christian guy, you know, teacher Christian guy, and struggled with depression, struggled with depression, struggled with depression, and he ended up killing himself. And so I'm standing on the stage in front of 600 people over the oh. and I'm trying to give Chris Pedro, I'm trying to give a sermon on how can a Christian man take his own life? Because we are all raised in some kind of theological understanding that if you take your own life, you're going to hell. There's just, there's no coming back from that. And I'm standing up there saying, wait a minute. I am not going to have faith in some theological something that some dude wrote down. I'm going to have faith in God who is the judge. Because God understands Chris's heart. All right? And here's, here's where all of that wrestling got me to. God is not going to be mad at a one-legged man because he can't run. Yes. Does that make sense? Sheep get lost. Why? Because they're sheep! They have no sense of direction. Can't help it. Sheep need shepherds. That makes sense? Okay. Verse 8. Verse 8. Now, I want to go back. I want to go back to sheep for a minute. What, is, what does it say? What does it say about the shepherd if the shepherd will not look for the lost sheep? Not the shepherd. I don't care about a sheep. Mm -hmm. I got 99 in the field. Eh, what's one? What's that say about his heart? Careless. Yeah. Say it again. I said careless. Yeah. Careless. Mm -hmm. Heart hearted. Cold hearted. Mm -hmm. Think about America for a minute. We're, we're, we're going to discuss the law of averages right now. I got 99. I mean, if I go look for that one, what, what could happen to the 99? I mean, they're still sheep. They, their sense of direction is any better than that one. So if I go try to find that one, how many more get out? Well, they have everybody get off. Isn't that the American way? Yeah, that's what jungle is. That's what swaying is. Luke 15, verse 8, where it says, Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? Question mark. When she has found it, she calls together her friend's neighbor, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What is the question that Jesus asks? Who would look for it, right? Who would look for it? It's the same question. True? I mean, so the question is, what shepherd would go look for a sheep? What woman would try to find the lost coin? 
It's the same question. Why is the coin lost? Because it's a coin. Okay, I heard a couple words. Say it again. Because she lost it. Because she lost it, okay? So does coin not have a sense of direction? No. no. Is a coin defenseless? Yes. Well, I guess in a matter of sense it would be, right? Yeah. But a coin is a, a coin can't make a decision, right? So if a coin, think about the times you have lost money. And you're digging around in the car, you're looking under the seats, you're looking everywhere you can think, I know I got a $20 bill laying here. So, why was the $20 bill lost? Because I misplaced it. It got dropped. It was mishandled. Now, if it were the coin, that means we've been dropped. Mishandled. Misplaced. Done wrong to. Okay? Now, understand that the coin is lost through no fault of its own. The coin and the sheep are both lost through no fault of their own. A sheep is lost because a sheep is a sheep and a sheep doesn't have a good sense of direction. A coin is lost because somebody mishandled that coin. Somebody had a harsh, stern word when they should have had a kind, loving word. Or vice versa. Does that make sense? Now, since Jesus asked the question for both of these, Jesus is saying that in both cases, the sheep and the coin are lost and they'll follow their own and you best be looking for them. The responsibility is to find them where they are lost. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, when I think about this century and I think about our churches and I think about faith as we generally understand it, I see lots of lost sheep and lots of lost coins. See, the church is full of good sheep. They get lost from time to time. And they get lost because generally pastors are not very good shepherds. Pastors are pretty good speech makers. You know, pretty good CEOs. We're not really very good at being shepherds. That's really what we're called to do, is to be shepherds. Now, so I'm way better on it. I'm, I'm making a generalization. Why? Because the church is lost. Make sense? Now, the church is also attached to lost coins, not full of lost coins, because the lost coins are represented by the empty seats. There are people that you know, that I know, that you know, and I know. That they should be here. But the church wronged them somehow. They have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to religion or something. Right? And only part of it. Why? Something happened. Something happened. They got this handled somehow, some way. They don't, they're not anti-Jesus. They're just anti-institution. They're anti-buildings. They're anti-organization. They're anti-fellowship. They would rather be alone with their faith. Why? Because there's no buddy checking, helping, loving, putting their arm around, that kind of thing. Our faith was never meant to be a solo act. It was meant to be a pair. Make sense? In both cases, right, the shepherd, the, 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 the handler, the other person in the story should be what? Searching for the lost sheep, right? Searching for the lost ones. In both cases. Can I keep going? Yeah. Can I keep going? Okay. Um, so let's go to verse 11. Same chapter, the prodigal son. Now, all of you are familiar with this as a word. If I said, hey, the prodigal, you know what I mean, okay? The prodigal son. It's interesting to me that, it's, that chapter 15 goes lost sheep, lost coin, prodigal son. 
It doesn't go lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. But understand, prodigal son means lost son that came home. All right? But make no mistake, the son was lost. Okay? A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. <coughs> now, he didn't divide his wealth between him and his youngest son. He divided his wealth between his youngest son and his oldest son. Okay? So he divided his wealth between them, and not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. There he squandered his estate with loose living. I love that term, loose living. There's nobody in this room that know what loose living is. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Now, I want to back up just for a minute. So in verse 13, he takes the money. He takes the power that he's inherited. He takes the name that he's inherited, and he goes off to make his own name, to forge his own way, right? And he's loose living. He's doing what he thinks is the right way to be a man. All right, and then what happens? He was broke. Mm -hmm. Why? He was wise. What's the book say? Verse 14. What happened? Severe famine. Famine. Severe famine. Okay. Uh, hurricanes. Famine. Uh, drought. Mm -hmm. uh, floods. Fires. Tornadoes. Pick, pick one. It doesn't matter. Pick any of those things. Why? Why does it? There are natural disasters. Because it helps us come to our senses. Mm -hmm. yes. It helps us oftentimes realize things are way bigger than what I need. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, Pastor, are you saying that God caused the hurricane to wreck Florida to prove a point? <clears throat> no, I'm saying God created a world in which there's hurricanes. And in this world in which there's hurricanes and all these other natural disasters, they help us get clarity that we're not all that. Because we're lost sheep, oftentimes, coins, oftentimes, and sometimes we're the lost son. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly fill his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, but no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, okay, that's an amen statement, so I'm going to read that one more time. <laughs> but when he came to his senses, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger? I will get up and go to my father, and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion for him, ran and embraced him, and he kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet, and bring the fatty calf, not that old skinny one in the corner, bring the fatty calf, kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Okay, now this thing is dead. He was lost and has now been found. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing, and he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. And he became angry. It was not willing to go in, and his father came out and began pleading with him. He answered, look, for so many years I've been serving you, and I've never neglected a command of yours, and yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. When the son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, 
You killed the fatted calf for him? And he said, son, you've always been with me. And all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. Amen. 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 Okay. So in the story of the prodigal son, what is the question that Jesus asks? Guys, hear what John said? No. He said the son had to figure out on his own how to get back. Because yeah. right. he knew where the father was. Yeah. He knew where the father was. He knew where home was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't lost because of nothing that he did. He was lost because of what he did. Yeah. He was lost with intent. Yeah. He chose to leave. Okay. So let, let, let me add some of our, our culture. As much as I rail against our culture, you have to speak in cultural language for people to get it, right? Um, so in verse 13, no, verse 12, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them, and not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together, went on a journey to a distant country. This is the son giving the dad the finger. Yes. It's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the son saying, I know better than you. I'm going to do it my way. And the, the, the dad at that point has no recourse but to say, okay, unless he's going to lock him up. Lock him in the basement or something. This is what my oldest son did to me. And all I could do was help him pay for time in his first apartment and provide the basic necessities for a time and try to build a foundation under him so that he could go be a proud, arrogant jerk. Because I love him. That's all you do. But that has a Termination day. Okay, I know, and this, I'm not trying to make a determination on parents that will do this forever and parents that don't. I'm not making that determination. I'm saying, for that and I, there's a termination day. Okay, we're going to help you to a point, and if the finger is still in the air at that point, then the other year on your own. That makes sense? Yeah. And so, You see, the son didn't want to be found because he didn't think he was lost. He went as far away as he could to stake his own claim, to be his own name. Now, if you think about it, that's the same story. It's the same story as um, the Tower of Babel. God wasn't mad because they made a tall building. God was mad because they wanted their own name. It's the same story done all over again. His intent was to do his father dishonor. Now, from his father's perspective, from his father's perspective, everywhere the son went looked like lost. Right? So if you're the father in this story, everywhere the son went looked like lost. Where's your son? I'm not sure, but he's lost. Now, from the son's perspective, per perspective, everywhere he went wasn't his father's. So he looked like bad. Because that was his desire. Was to not be under his father's name. Does that make sense?
So lost in this story wasn't realized by the son until he, quote, came to his senses. Now, coming to his senses in this story and in our story as God being the father is all of a sudden the son got to see with the father's perspective. Once the son could see with his father's perspective, he realized, I'm lost! <laughs> the thing is, he knew his way. Does that make sense? Let me try to put a bow on this um, because there's there's two take homes here. There's there is a there is a, a, a challenge and a mandate for us because we're a mission. Okay, I don't I don't treat you guys like you were lost sheep as much as I treat you guys like hey you're going to help with the sheep. Does that make sense? And so um, lost sheep are lost because they're sheep. I don't know any better. Coins are lost because they were wronged. They were mishandled. In both cases, no fault of their own. Let's go find them. Let's go find them. Pastor, I don't know how to do that. Again, Pastor, that's one of those things that we say, yeah, we jump up, we're excited, we go up in our car, we drive home, we don't know how to do that. How do we, how do we find lost sheep, lost coins? Ask God who they are. Lord, who are the lost sheep and the lost coins in my, in my circle? In my circle of influence? Who, who do I know that fits this category? And that, Lord, give me the word, give me the courage, give me the, 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 the email, the letter, the whatever, to just say, hey, man, I'm thinking about you, I'm going to pray for you. I'm not asking you to invite them here. <clears throat> All I'm asking you to do is reach out to them. Reach out to them. Hey, think about you. Think about you. Anything I pray for? Plant a seed, man. Don't show them a whole buffet right away. Just plant a seed. <laughs> little breadcrumbs. Little breadcrumb magic. Now, the lost son is lost because he wants to be. It's through fault that he's lost. What's our response then? What's the father's response? Wait. Wait. Doesn't mean don't pray for it. It means wait. I see a couple heads nodding. I can see a couple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Bruce, can you just off the top of your head give me, give me a good definition for a hustler? So is it possible that there are folks in our circle that we would think are sheep but are really Very much true, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know who Stephen is. I, I pray for Stephen. I've talked to Stephen. I've asked Stephen's letters. But when I go to his court case, I don't know who he is. I think he's messed up. That's what I think. But I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a sheep. I don't know if he's a coin. I'm not sure if he's a coin. I don't know who he is. So what do you do when you're in that spot? You know, sure. Is that if I have a relationship with my son Seth, mm -hmm. and I think my son is hustling me, he's a prodigal son to me. But to you, he's a lost sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's all about the relationship that we have with one another that determines what kind of category. So I may be in a wait and let see mode, but you're not. You're in a get after mode. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, parents always have this joke, and we all understand the joke. And you guys are getting to the age where you're going to get it. Real quick. And, and, and the joke is my kids think I'm smart. I don't my kids think I'm stupid. And then your kids get a little bit older, move out, then they think you're smart again. There's like this stage where they won't believe anything that you say, and then they won't believe nothing that you say. And then they go out and start their own little family, and they come back, Dad, help me. I don't know how to. And all of a sudden, you're smart again. Amen. <laughs> so, in some sense, the sheep, the coin, the son is all lost. But lost is determined on the relationship they have with us. Lord, show me the sheep and the coins. 
And they showed me who the sons are, so I know how to wait. But I also know how to send him to them. I know how to send him to them, or her to them. Because I love them that much, I just don't want to wait without help. I want the help to, to decrease my weight. Does that make sense? Let's close with uh, verse 20 in chapter 15. Verse 20. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. What does it say about the father? Compassion. <laughs> says he has compassion. Mm -hmm. He loves. Got grace. Says he loves. Yeah. Says he will embrace. He's actively watching. He's actively watching. Mm -hmm. Actively watching. So when I say sometimes you're going to have to wait, wait doesn't mean I'll do something else. Wait means I can't go any further than right here. But I can just see. But I can just see. You're actively waiting, watching, praying, and sending. faith has to be done in community. Because it's only in community that we understand all of each other's roles. I can't do this without you. Tamora could give me the greatest messages ever, and if it was just a dead night here, she would leave. Does that make sense? When you think about the people that are in your circle, the Lord has called you to be part of that circle Completely. You may be waiting, you may be seeking. You, whenever, wherever you are, you've got a role to play there. And it makes it harder when family's involved. Like physical family, like blood family, it makes it difficult. It makes it difficult because now you're trying to do what you're being called to do, yet you still want to mess up Thanksgiving. You still want to be able to have sit around a table and everybody love each other. You know, it comes from big families, that's exactly what I mean. Now, holidays for Annette and I are, are hard, are hard, because we have kids that don't all like each other. Um, there's been a lot of water under the bridge with different stuff, and, and, and sometimes kids are in prison, and sometimes kids are, we don't know where they are, and sometimes we have kids that say, hey, I'm coming home, and they don't, you know, no explanation. And so holidays are hard. Uh, my wife, I'm more discreet. Does that surprise you at all? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm more of a, why don't you put a tree in your house? That's just stupid. You know, I just have that house. You know, Halloween. Why would you knock on somebody's door that you don't know and get food from them? You don't do that any other time. Why is wearing a collie dog mask make it okay? I mean, I just, I, I don't get holidays, really. Now, take just one. Same way. So Jesse and I can ball humbug our way through the holiday too. You know? So here, so I don't have this big yearning to have the, the, the big sit around Christmas holiday with the, the turkeys and the hams and the the twinkle. I, I don't know, just I'm not drawn to that, okay? But she is. Desperately wants that big family Christmas holiday mm -hmm. where everybody's happy, where joy is real, right? Man, we got sheep coins and prodigals. All we got to come home and make all that happen. <laughs> we got all that kind of stuff. And so I hurt for her because I know how much she wants that. Does that make sense? We're hoping that this Christmas we can get one family photo. Because the last family photo that we had with everybody, oh, was this fall. Oh, yeah. Ashley, I'll call the moment. Okay. Oh, 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 but they weren't happy. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one where there's actually smiles on the faces. Um, not people waiting in 
the background for handcuffs. Um, so we have a we have a responsibility. All of us, Mary Mag, has a responsibility to one another to dig in. For I may not know who your sheep coins or sons are. In, in that sense, I may not know who your sheep coins and sons are, but I can help pray for that. I, I can get sent on special assignment at times. The Lord has this way of having us bump into people where all of a sudden we see a connection and go, "Oh, you know that? I didn't know you knew that." Oh, the next thing you know, boom, there's a connection. Why is that true? So that the spirit can get in. Does that make sense? Lord in heaven, I love you. Lord, thank you that you love us. And Lord, thank you that we can be lost, and yet your love doesn't go away. That your love doesn't, doesn't get quenched. Lord, and, and, and thank you that we can be lost through no fault of ourselves. We can just be lost because we're dumb. Lord, but for all those times that we're lost with intent, Lord, thank you for the people that you have caused to come into our lives in such a way that has helped us come to our senses, that we have returned back to our Father's house again. Lord, you're an amazing and an awesome God. Lord, we love you here. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
it's not only important to remember that whether we're sheep, coins, or sons, and how that's about a relationship, it also works with once we are found, it's the restoration of a relationship. So you can be found from things that you thought you could never get back. That you get back in that relationship. You're restored to the household. You're restored to the family. You're restored to relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Does that make sense? So it is that God is in this reckless love pursuit of us. But you know who he sends? Us. Trusts us enough to send us. You ever think about that way? Got this really important job I gotta do. It's gotta get done. Who should I send? Hey, Lord, send me. Uh, maybe not you. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is our right, our duty, our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels, the archangels, and the whole company of heaven, who forever and ever and ever say these words Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Santa in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Santa in the highest. All praise and glory is yours. For in your tender mercy you gave us your only Son, Jesus. He suffered death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself a full, perfect, sufficient sacrifice satisfaction for the sins of the whole world that he instituted and his holy gospel commanded us to continue this perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until he comes again. So now, Lord, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and to sanctify with your word and your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine. Lord, I, I pray that you would take these normal, everyday, natural things and turn them into wild, crazy, supernatural things, Lord. May we be blessed by your grace. May these be the blood and the body of Jesus. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of all sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord, Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, Jesus, we, your humble servants, Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate. That's what this is. We celebrate. We celebrate the memorial of your Son. We remember his blessed passion, his precious death, his mighty resurrection, his glorious ascension. His promise to come again. Christ has died. Christ has risen. And Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ has risen. 
in Christ who will come again. Lord, we earnestly desire that you would accept these gifts, not based off of our merits, but based off of the blood of Christ. That they would be sufficient enough for the forgiveness of all the sins of the church, for me, for them, for all of us. Lord, I confess. Lord, I confess that I have sinned against you. That I have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed. In thought, word, and deed. Sake of your son Jesus. For the sake of your son Jesus. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Please have mercy upon us. Please have mercy upon us. We may delight in your will. We may delight in your will. Walk in your way. Walk in your way. Bring glory to your name. Bring glory to your name. All my days. All my days. Here we offer and present to you, Lord, ourselves, our souls. this Holy Communion may worthily receive the blood and the body of Jesus, that we would be filled with your grace, made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy, because of our many sins, our many undones, to offer you any sacrifice, any sacrifice of we ask that you accept this duty, this service that we owe, not blaming our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, I pray that you would unite the church. Lord, that we would be one. We would forget all these silly differences, Lord, when we look at each other as brothers and sisters. Lord, unite us with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Lord, heaven, may this blessing get to Heike. May it get to the Flemings. May it get to Ron and Stacy Boss. Lord, may it get to Troy. Who am I missing? Ollie. May it get, what's that? Holly. 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 May it get to Holly. May it get to Stephen. Lord, may it get to the ones that should be in this room but are not. Or may it get to the sheep and the coins that you're going to put in our way. May God bless us with this comfort. That the easy answers, the half truths, and the superficial relationships of this world, so that we may live deep within our heart where the Holy Spirit lies. May God bless us with anger. That the injustice, the oppression, and the exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, for freedom, and for peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, addiction, hunger, war, so that we may reach out our hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to actually believe that we can make a difference in the world so we can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness and love and joy and peace to the world. I can't help but ask, Lord, as I read through this and we're praying for this blessing, that I pray for those 125 families that lost loved ones at a stupid soccer game. Because they rioted over the school. It's a game. Lord, the families of those who lost loved ones in a hurricane. Lord, the ones that lose their lives, the families that lose lives every day, whether it be poverty, Addiction, violence, the Ukraine. Lord, the world needs this blessing. By the power of the Holy Spirit sent from the Father and the Son. Amen. 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 Let's stand for our closing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. bless the food. Lord, may you bless Ashley's finger. Lord, may you bless all of those that had some hand in the food and the ones of us that are going to eat it. Lord, you're amazing and you're awesome and we know we're small, Lord, but we know we're mighty because we have the spirit rolling through and all God's people say. <laughs>